Do you know how crazy difficult it gets to deal with infinity in mathematics once you let go of the axiom of choice? It's insane. Let me first suggest a couple of exercises on cardinalities as a warm-up exercise for you. Uh, here is the natural numbers, and that those bars means the cardinality of the natural numbers. And here, that symbol is disjoint union. So what that is, is a set that is the disjoint union of two distinct copies of the natural numbers, and that's the cardinality. So I want you to prove that the cardinality of the natural numbers is equal to the cardinality of two disjoint copies of the natural numbers. And whenever I say two cardinalities are the same, what I want is a bijection from that set to that set. Next, prove that the cardinality over the natural numbers is equal to the cardinality of the Cartesian product of the natural numbers with itself. So now those are pairs, uh, A comma B, where A and B are natural numbers. Prove that those two are in bijection. Now, one step harder is to prove that the cardinality of the real numbers, which we know is larger than the cardinality of the natural numbers, but that cardinality is equal to the cardinality of the Cartesian product of the real numbers with the real numbers. Prove that one. And if you have been able to prove those three statements, now think about this one. Let S be any infinite set, any infinite set. Is the cardinality of S equal to the cardinality of the disjoint union of two copies of S? And is the cardinality of S equal to the cardinality of the Cartesian product of S with itself? And the thing is that this feels like this should be true. It must be true. But in fact, because I'm saying any infinite set, I can't prove this unless I assume the axiom of choice. So if you do assume the axiom of choice, then the answer is yes. And in fact, if A and B are any infinite sets, then the cardinality of the disjoint union of A and B is equal to the cardinality of the direct product of the Cartesian product of A and B, and it's equal to the maximum cardinality of A and B. However, and here is the crazy part, if you assume the axiom of choice is false, if you work with Sir Melo Frankel and not choice, then the answer is no. It turns out that that combination implies the existence of what's called amorphous sets, which are the following. S is amorphous if S cannot be written as the disjoint union of two infinite subsets. And then let S be an amorphous set. If S is amorphous, then the cardinality of the disjoint union of two copies of S cannot be equal to the cardinality of S. Why? Because if it was equal, then this set would be in bijection with S itself, and that would mean that S itself has a subset that is in bijection with that subset, and another subset which is in bijection with this copy of S, so this would be infinite, that would be infinite, that would be a disjoint union of two infinite sets, and that would contradict the fact that S is amorphous. So this can happen if the axiom of choice is false.